Today, we are going to see how you can extend the declarative agent with an API plugin, adding additional requests to the API plugin and leveraging adaptive cards. As Veza said, I'm just helping Bob to deliver this session. So the actual uh, demo will be delivered by Bob through a, a recording. So let me quickly switch to the uh, actual slide and then we will move to the demo. This is uh, a, a demo which is taken from uh, the Copilot Developer Camp, uh, which is a set uh, of training material and videos to help you learn how to extend uh, Microsoft 365 Copilot. Uh, we have multiple options there. You can be a maker or a coder, and depending on what's your role, you can choose the right pathway for you to understand how to extend uh, Copilot. Today, we are talking about the extend path, which is the one about uh, building uh, declarative agents for Microsoft 365 Copilot. And you can learn more about all of the pathways by watching this video that you can see uh, right here. Uh, also, by learning how to extend Microsoft 365 Copilot, you can have a chance to get a badge, yet another set of badges, actually. So you can get badges for each and every uh, pathway you will complete, and you can get a badge if you will complete all of them, and yet another one if you will be a black belt completing all of the pathways and sharing your knowledge with the community, so sharing a, a, a sample in the sample community gallery. Time flies, so the uh, initiative will end on May the 20th, and it will target just the very first 200 community members. So be quick, start learning, start uh, extending Microsoft 365 Copilot, and uh, uh, claim your badge as soon as you are ready. But without any further delay, let's move to the actual uh, demo, uh, and uh, let's move to Bob German. Well, thanks. This week, I'm going to show Labs E4 and E5. of Copilot Developer Camp. In these labs, you'll add additional features to the Azure Functions and the API plugin. And this is a great way to get to know all of the different files and places where the API is defined without having to build the whole thing from scratch. And then I'll briefly touch on lab E5, where we add adaptive cards to the solution. So our journey begins copying some Azure function code, and this is already written for you. If you've never seen an Azure function before, this is what defines uh, the API code itself. And this particular Azure function is going to add the slash projects path so that the web service is aware not only of consultants and the current user, me, but also is aware of projects. Now, up here at the top, there's a bunch of imports, including the Project API service, which does all the underlying database code that was already there all along. And also the identity service, which uh, will eventually authenticate the user, but for now, we're going to hard code that as being a test user. Now, the runtime is going to pass a request object in, which represents the HTTP request. And then the code is going to initialize the response, uh, which will eventually have more details in it. And it's going to call the identity service uh, to validate the request. And then we have a switch statement, which checks if it's a get or a post. And it's going to extract all of the query string parameters and actually go and call the database uh, to get the information requested. And then that gets returned in the response, of course. Now, I don't have time to go through the whole thing, but I'll point out that at the bottom of the module, um, the code will catch any errors and return an error response if any errors occur. So now we want to test out that new API. So I'm going to add to my HTTP request file um, the new request that we've just inserted. And you'll see that there's a slash projects request, get request, and also a post to add a person to a project. So I'll run this and we should be able to get some project information. I'll just minimize the browser since we just want to test the API at this point. And it, as you can see, when I click the get request, I get back a list of all the projects. So now comes the tricky part. We have to let Copilot know about these new HTTP methods. So I'm going to go back to the instructions and follow those on how to set this up. Um, I've already tested the resource, so let's go in and I'm going to open the API specification file. 
And I'm going to update that um, from a copy that's in the lab instructions. So you can see we've added a slash projects path with a get and all of the parameters that get passed in and returned from the get are all here. So this is kind of the hard part. Uh, it turns out the developer proxy is capable of generating these files and that is a great way to just exercise it through the developer proxy. Um, Gary Trinder has an example on this uh, up on YouTube that shows you how to do it. And it will take care of a lot of the busy work of gathering all these details for you. Now, the next step is I'm going to do the same kind of an update to the plugin.json file. So if you'll recall, the uh, file we just looked at is the Swagger file or Open API definition. That is based on a standard for documenting an API. All the stuff that is Copilot specific doesn't fit in there because, you know, it's a standard. Uh, the Swagger file is a standard. So instead, we have this plugin file and uh, that has all of the Copilot specific details inside of there. So a big feature of the plugin file is this idea of functions. So these are the different functions, if you will, um, that Copilot could take. And we've added one for get projects. And we've also added one for post assign a consultant to a project. And this just references which requests from the Swagger file Copilot should use to carry out those actions. Notice that there is something in here called response semantics. That's what tells Copilot which fields in the response are relevant, including a, a title and a subtitle, and even the path to the data itself uh, relative to the HTTP response that's going to come back. And because this is a post, we also have a confirmation, which is an adaptive card that we can use to just check with the user and make sure that they really want to update the data. Scrolling down a little bit, you'll see that we have all the functions listed here in this run for functions array, and we've added the ones for projects. Okay, so we're pretty much ready to run this. Let me uh, do one more small change before we do, which is just to increment the version number in the manifest, which will force Microsoft 365 to reload the agent uh, fresh and reread all that metadata. So I'll go ahead and run this and Teams Toolkit will do its thing. And in a moment we should, here we go, find ourselves inside of Copilot. So I wanna try this new functionality. So I'm just gonna ask, I know the test data has an A datum project in there, so I'm just gonna say, what projects are we doing for A datum? And you can see when it asks for this confirmation again, that means we've got a new version of the app uh, because I had previously said to not ask, not keep asking. And you can see here that it does indeed know all about the ADATUM project. So now I'll move on to the adaptive cards uh, lab. And this begins with creating and testing a simple adaptive card, but I'm not gonna do the simple one. I'm gonna do the actual one from the project and show you a little variation here. So I just copied the adaptive card uh, text from the lab and put it into the designer, into the adaptive card designer, which is at adaptivecards.io. And I got rid of the property name so that this is a proper card. And you can see that it looks um, like it's supposed to look, except for all the information is missing. So let's fill that in with some actual information. I'm going to go back to my project, which is running go to my HTTP file where I have all the test queries and I'm going to run the slash consultants query and I'm just going to copy the subset which is for the first consultant. So the way this works is that Copilot is going to get all the consultants. It's going to render a card for each one. So I only want one of them here and I'll paste that into place. And now, hey, look, everything's there and I can see Avery's picture. I can see everything. The picture is just a external URL, so those are all static URLs. But what I'll point out is that the um, adaptive card itself has these little data binding expressions, such as uh, name and email and phone, which actually connect to the data in the HTTP response. Okay, so now let's put these adaptive cards into our plugin.json file so that we can view them inside of Copilot. 
So I'll copy the card from the lab instructions and return to the project and open up the plugin file. And uh, we're going to repeat this for every response. You see here's the first one, which is for consultants. And underneath of response semantics and properties, we're going to put the uh, adaptive card. And that's going to be called a static template, which means that it's a static card. We're going to do the data binding, or Copilot will do the data binding, but you don't get to change the card at runtime. And um, I'll repeat that for all five of the responses. Each one has its own adaptive card, depending on what it's returning. And that's, that's realistic. You're going to want to think about what information do you want to display in response to each type of query. So now let's go ahead and run the solution. And if it was already running, you'd want to restart it at this point. And uh, make sure that the uh, manifest uh, version is also updated so that Copilot will load all the new information. And now I'll run the, um, the regular prompt, find consultants with TypeScript skills. And what we should get back is the same list of consultants as before, except down at the bottom, and this version of Copilot is giving us giant images. Um, but anyway, here's the adaptive card as expected. So that's it. That's how you can bring adaptive cards into your declarative agent. Yeah, so thank you, Bob. And thank you, Veza, and back to you.